Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your leadership. And Secretary, good to have you with us. Um, well, first of all, on the comprehensive immigration bill, it was not supported by the people. And over a 10-year period, uh, the number of green cards would increase from lawfully then 10 million people getting permanent residence to 30 million people uh, getting permanent residence. And as to the enforcement situation, Senator Grassley offered a bill that said, well, we want to see the border secure for six months before the amnesty occurs. That was rejected by the Democratic majority in the Senate. Senator Cornyn had a bill that would call for a commission uh, uh, to certify and improve the border situation uh, using governors and others. That was rejected. And so that's part of the reason we had such a difficult time. Um, Secretary Johnson, um, I believe Senator Grassley is correct to say that we see a lack of will uh, in your department and before you took the office and from the president, frankly, on down. Uh, he mentioned interior enforcement. Forty percent of the people here unlawfully today came lawfully and refused to leave on time. We have no real uh, ability to deal with that and have not taken uh, steps required by law to deal with that. From the, First day the president took office, he stopped worksite inspections and basically threatened agents never again to do that. He canceled and effectively ended the 287G program that welcomes state officers to be trained by the federal officers to help them improve their situations and their ability to help. Uh, the sanctuary cities continue unabated. They don't even honor your detainers won't even honor your detainers, and we need to, why we would not push back against that, um, utilizing financial incentives, uh, I don't know. Operation Streamline that worked in a number of border sectors has been cut back dramatically, if not ended. True interior removals are much lower than they have been. The president's push for amnesty, his continual discussion of it, his promise of amnesty and he's actually carrying out executive amnesty after Congress refused has increased uh, immigration unlawfully into the country. We've continued to allow foreign countries to refuse to accept back people that we are trying to deport. If, if they don't accept that, then they shouldn't be, have other members, uh, other citizens admitted here. Morale in your department is the lowest in the government. Indeed, they even filed a lawsuit against your predecessor because the department was blocking them from carrying out plain law. Uh, deportations are down 41% over three years, 25% over last year. Uh, 160,000 uh, uh, criminal aliens are on the streets. And uh, uh, now you've announced a program to fly people from Central American countries uh, who apply for refugee and parole status in those countries to, to the United States of America uh, at the expense of the U.S. taxpayers. All this has led, I believe, millions to conclude if they come here illegally, they'll be successful. And we've got to change that fundamentally. And if you do that, I believe we can make uh, progress. And, uh, and in fact, I would note that uh, you've gotten a good bit more resources, although Border Patrol numbers are beginning to slip again. And in fiscal year 2006, before the first big battle over uh, amnesty occurred, there were 12,000 agents. Now there are 21,000 agents, although they've declined for the last three years, Border Patrol agents. So I don't, uh, just can't say. Mr. Secretary, that you have led and the president and your predecessors have led effectively demonstrating a will to do what the American people want, which is a lawful system of immigration that serves the national interest, one that we can be proud of. We're not there yet, and you need to do more. And you can do more with the resources you have, and if you need more resources and legal changes, Please let us know, and I think Congress will respond. Let me ask you this, just some fundamental questions. How many aliens with final orders of removal are currently in the United States and not have, have not been removed? Uh, I don't have the number sitting here right now. I'm sure it is a 
large number by your measure and mine, and it's an unacceptable number. But I know that there is a huge backlog in our immigration enforcement efforts. Um, we need to prioritize those, in my judgment, who are public safety threats in this tremendous backlog, and those who have come to this country illegal recently, which is why in the new priorities we've put an emphasis on those who arrived here after January 1, 2014. So well, going forward... With regard to your here, priority, your I understand priority. you need to prioritize. I can understand that. But a priority become, can become in itself an amnesty. A priority can say huge numbers of people are not going to be deported. What I hear you saying, and I think others could hear you saying, that if you don't commit a serious crime, you're okay. You're not going to be deported. Let me ask you this. According to the Border Patrol statistics, in fiscal year 2014, 479,000 individuals were apprehended at the southwest border. Yes. How many of those remain currently in the United States? Uh, a lot have been removed. A lot were sent back on an expedited basis last year. But as I said a moment ago, a number of those are from non-contiguous countries and they've asserted claims. So that is relief. a problem. I think we need to help you pass laws that would make that easier. But how many of those easier to remove? But how many of those are actually here, having been released on bail, have not been deported, and have gone someplace throughout the country? Do you not have the numbers? Well, let me say two things. One, when we had the spike last summer in the Rio Grande Valley, we expedited the return flights to Central America. We reduced the turnaround time from something like 30 days down to four days. And we surge, we surge resources. And so we turned them around quicker, and we've kept the resources on the southern border. Well, I'm going so to submit a written question. My time's up. The numbers up. remain low. Uh, I'll submit a written question. But I think you need to be able to tell us how many of those have actually not been deported but have successfully entered the country uh, through that illegal process. Senator, that's a knowable number, and I'm happy to provide it to you. I just don't have it sitting here. Thank you. Secretary Johnson, thanks for your leadership at the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, you have a tough job. Unfortunately, Congress hasn't made it any easier for you. My friend and colleague from Alabama said, what America wants is a lawful system of immigration. Actually, it was the Homeland Security panel, Senator Johnson's committee, uh, and indicated that nearly six out of every ten aliens who attempt to infiltrate the United States through the U.S.-Mexico border are not apprehended. That's his estimate. He, he went on to say, ask any line agent in the field, and he or she will tell you at best we apprehend 35 to 40 percent of the illegal immigrants coming, attempting to cross. This number is even lower for drug smugglers, who are much more adept at eluding capture. Uh, he said, quote, agents who repeatedly report groups larger than 20 face retribution. Management will either take them out of the field and assign them to processing detainees at the station or assign them to a fixed position in low-volume areas as punishment, Cabrera told the lawmakers. Needless to say, agents got the message and now stay below this 20-person threshold, no matter the actual size of the group. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you're the head person of this entity. Have you investigated this charge about agents being told not to have more than 20 to report more than 20 if they see more than 20? I've heard of that allegation. I've heard of that charge. Uh, I've looked into it. I don't have a specific answer to, the, to that suggestion. I will say this, Senator. I think that 6 out of 10 is too high an estimate, and I base that on my own conversations with Border Patrol experts. I will also tell you this, sir. I spend a lot of time myself on the southern border with our men and women in uniform in the Border Patrol because I want to hear directly from them what they say is happening on the southern border. I'm not interested in intermediaries. Well, have so, you met with Chris Crane, the head of the ICE Association? And I've met with Mr. Crane, too. How many times? Uh, at least once in my headquarters office. I invited him to come in, 
And I believe there was probably at least one other time as well. What about Mr. Palenkas uh, of the USCIS? Have you met with him? I don't recall that name. Yeah, it's the, the possible. association. Uh, well, these are the top people. And you've got the lowest morale in the government in your agency. And the reason is because they know you're not serious about supporting them in the mission that they've been given. They filed a lawsuit against Secretary Napolitano asserting that they're being required not to follow the law. So look, we've got a problem. I know I'd like to have a nice conversation here, but this administration has been systematically seeking not to see the laws enforced. They're focusing more and more on ameliorating the concerns of people who enter the country illegally than they are on people who uh, uh, um, that, that, uh, come lawfully. He also said this, Mr. Corbera did in his testimony, I want to be crystal clear, the border is not secure. How can this enormous gap exist between what you, DHS, tells you here in Washington and what our agents know to be the truth in the field? Frankly, it is how you manipulate statistics, close quote. And I think statistics are manipulated. You're saying we have more um, removals and big increase in removals, but you started counting, I believe before you took office, uh, Mr. Napolitano, started counting the turnarounds at the border as removals. They were never been considered that before. Without those, you haven't had an increase in removals. In fact, you have a significant decline. Um, and uh, I think you've acknowledged, have you not, that uh, those, that counting is a new system of accounting uh, that uh, counts the uh, apprehensions at the border as removals. You, you, answer, uh, you admitted that or acknowledged that to Mr. Uh, Culberson, the House member in a House committee meeting. I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Well, but I he asked you this. Uh, more than half of those removals, I'm quoting Representative Culberson, were attributed to ICE, that are attributed to ICE, are actually a result of Border Patrol arrests that wouldn't have been counted in prior administrations. Mr. Johnson, correct. That was sir, I have uh, learned from 30 years of cross-examining witnesses that if I'm to answer such a question, I think I want to see the Q&A before and after. <laughs> well, look, mind, isn't it sir. the truth? Haven't y'all been, isn't it a new thing under, in, in recent years to start counting both, or you, you don't know? Sir, I do know this. You're the secretary. You should know that you changed the standards. Here, I've got a chart here somewhere that show the actual numbers. Uh, actual removals on the ICE chart show uh, Border Patrol numbers along with ICE. That increases the numbers. It's about 300,000. Only 100,000 are what were classically called removals previously. <clears throat> May I read you something? This is one of yes? my okay. this is one of my directives from November 20th. If you'll just bear with me a second. Well, the chart I just looked at was on, on no, was on ICE chart of in 2014, September 20th, 2014, when you were in office. I've heard the suggestion of double counting, and if there's double counting, that obviously should not happen. One of my directives from November 20 is I'm directing the Office of Immigration Statistics to create the capability to collect, maintain, and report to the Secretary data reflecting the numbers of those apprehended, removed, returned, or otherwise repatriated by any component of DHS, and to report that data in accordance with the priority set forth above. I want our components to cooperate with this effort. I intend for this data to be part of the package of data released by DHS to the public annually. Okay. So well, I appreciate that, but let me tell you what DHS is happening. Cases. You can call this double counting or not. Border Patrol apprehends people at the border, and they're sent back, and they count those as their numbers. ICE used to only count what they did from the interior. Now they count that plus the Border Patrol. Now that's the fact, and that without those additional numbers, they don't show the improvement the department has been declaring. Now with regard to uh, streamline that you were asked about, this is really important, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, 
Secretary of Homeland Security Janet Napolitano said Operation Streamline has proven effective. It's a program where people, when they're caught at the border, are actually prosecuted for the offense of entering the country. They are convicted of misdemeanors. They aren't kept in jail a long time, but they have a conviction on their record. That was a belief that it might deter more people from coming, and it was the right thing to do since it violates the law. Uh, in the Del Rio sector, after this was done, overall apprehensions, apprehensions declined from 42,000 to 17,000. In 2008, Attorney General Michael McCasey said, quote, the program has an unbelievable return effect. In the Yuma sector, from October through December of 2008, the Department of Justice prosecuted over 1,200 cases. As a consequence, apprehension rates dropped nearly 70 percent. What we see both statistically and anecdotally is that when people who cross the border illegally are brought to face the reality that they are committing a crime, even if it's just a misdemeanor, that has a huge impact on their willingness to try again and on the willingness of others to break the law coming across the borders. In fiscal year 2007, former Homeland Security Secretary Chertoff noted that apprehension rates in Yuma dropped nearly 70 percent after Operation uh, Streamline. Uh, recently, the president of the Border Patrol Union for the Yuma sector, uh, Brent Worsencroft, said, quote, Operation Streamline is one of the last strongholds we, <clears throat> we have as a deterrent. So, uh, have you talked to the Department of uh, Justice to attempt to restore this and actually expand it? And if, and, and if the number of people are coming has reduced, it would be even more effective and more practical, practical to initiate these kind of prosecutions. Now, you have to defend your agents. These are crimes. I think you should demand uh, the Department of Justice prosecute them. Senator, I speak to the Department of Justice all the time about how we are enforcing our immigration laws. I do know that our apprehension numbers are down this year in every sector, including Arizona, including Texas. And in my view, that's a good thing. And I think it's a good thing as a result of a number of different efforts, including our law enforcement efforts and our additional resources on the southern border, our efforts at public messaging, the good help we've received from the Central American governments and from the government of Mexico. In fact, our apprehension numbers are down. Why don't you do, why don't you continue this program that everybody has bragged on so consistently as having a real impact, as much as 50 percent reduction in attempts in the sectors where streamline is utilized? Why don't you do that? Is because there some I don't, reason you don't want to do that? I don't it used know. to be done. I don't know that prosecuting every mom with a young woman, with a young child crossing the border for a federal crime is the way to go. I do believe that the more effective way to go is to focus on the smugglers, focus on the coyotes uh, who are bringing these people across. Nobody freelances. They're Quite all brought at the hands of a criminal smuggling organization. So I want to get at the source, and that's what we're doing. Well. Secretary Chertoff said it dropped nearly 70 percent. Others have said high numbers. Uh, even Secretary Napolitano has bragged on the program. Senator Flake on the border, his predecessor, Senator Kyle, uh, thought this was one of the most effective things that's ever been done on the border. Mm -hmm. And you allowed it to stop. I guess you could blame Secre Attorney General Holder, but if you haven't complained about it, I don't see how you can blame him. 9-11 Commission uh, issued a number of recommendations after that terrible day when they did their report. One of them was that we have a biometric entry exit system. We've had that in law for since 2002. Uh, it is not in effect today. We, uh, you know, if you do an iPad or iPhone, you just put your fingerprint on it, reads it. So it's very practical. A person coming in an airport to put their finger on, they have a visa for a certain number of days, and when they exit, they should go out and put their hand on it and clocked out. So the exit visa has never been done. 
just last, uh, and the 9-11 Commission says there's no way you can have control over visas if you don't do that, which is plainly true. And um, so we've discussed it for years. It's, it's a requirement of law, and uh, it can be done. Uh, when can we expect it to be done, Mr. Secretary? Well, as I'm sure you know, Senator, we have biometric entrance entry now for large classes of travelers. I'd like to see us have biometric exit because I agree with you. I think it promotes security. I think it is a good thing to have. I know it's a 9-11 Commission recommendation. And it also involves a huge commitment in terms of resources uh, to have well, this. Let me ask you, so the 9-11 follow-up Commission follow-up report criticized the government. One of the most severe criticisms was not implementing what they recommended a decade ago. Uh, have you asked the Congress for any money? Have you laid out a plan on what it would take to have an exit system and ask for the resources to get it done? I believe that we have at some point, and it's something that I would like to see get done. Well, I would hope you would send that. We'll review the record, and I definitely think so that we should do that, and uh, I'm glad you would agree. With regard to um, the sanctuary city problem, we've got major cities, Los Angeles, Chicago, refusing to honor federal detainers on, on people who are in the country unlawfully, just saying we don't apparently have any desire whatsoever to support the government in having an effective immigration system, and in fact, we're going to sabotage it. Uh, do you think that, would you support legislation that would clarify ICE detainers and, and make them mandatory? I don't believe that a federal requirement that the local sheriff or police chief respond affirmatively to a detainer from the federal government is the appropriate way to go. I do agree with the spirit of your question, and that is why we have undertaken a very aggressive effort to work with Los Angeles, Chicago, Philadelphia, New York, San Francisco, where I was last week, state of California, where I was last week, on this exact issue. Because one of the reasons I think that we are having difficulty getting at the criminals is because of a lot of jurisdictions who are putting barriers on their ability to cooperate with us. So I, want I to agree. That. I think it's an unbelievable affront to law. It's an actual assertion that they're going to sabotage law enforcement in their cities. And not only uh, do they have a different view about immigration, they're going to sabotage the enforcement of plain law. Uh, now, your ICE director, um, former prosecutor, <clears throat> Sarah Saldana, when asked about the same question I ask you, uh, if they shouldn't be made mandatory on these cities. And she replied, thank you, amen, yes. So I understand after that she was apparently counseled and she uh, uh, issued a retraction of that. So was that your discussion with her? Did you direct that she should back off that position? <clears throat> um, no, I wouldn't characterize it that way. She did issue a written statement the next day correcting her statement, which I believe accurately and honestly reflects her own views. Well, I know Ms. Ms. Saldana well enough to know that I'm not going to be able to get her to say something she doesn't believe. Well, she uh, works for you. Yes. And um, agents are saying what and doing what you tell them to do, even if it's in violation of law. Um, so... Uh, what about this problem of countries that won't accept repatriation or return of people who came illegally? Uh, Senator Specter had legislation on that. His basic view was, and which I think you have the power to do now, uh, but would be mandatory, was if a country does not take back people who entered the United States unlawfully, that they don't get to have any more admissions. And that'll send them a message, and that'll end it. So we've been dealing with China, I think, as our number one 
problem, the biggest problem. Um, we have that was my exact conversation with the Chinese three weeks ago. I, I know that. Uh, and I know you perhaps made a little progress. But um, the memorandum of understanding, even with China, seems to do little to actually fix this problem. It essentially only provides two individuals from the Chinese government to assist with repatriation efforts that involve tens of thousands of Chinese nationals. Congress has provided a mechanism already in law, Section 243D of the Immigration Nationality Act, it permits you to notify the Secretary of State of China or other countries, and there are others, and in turn requires that the Secretary of State of the United States to stop granting visas to citizens and nationals of such countries. Um, have you made any notification to any country that you intend to execute such a plan uh, if they don't accept back the individuals who, need, who are to be deported? Well, I do believe that we and the State Department need to get with these countries and point out to them that they're slow in taking back the people we need to repatriate to them. And we have undertaken a campaign to do exactly that. I don't necessarily believe that we ought to suspend immigration travel from any of these countries because of this particular issue. I think that that is probably not the best way to go. Well, why but I have take had, them back, Mr. Senator, Secretary. I have had some very blunt conversations with my Chinese counterparts about this exact issue in Beijing when I was there three weeks ago, for example. Forgive me if I don't think you're going to have a big progress with China. I hope I'm wrong. It's happening and it's been going on for a decade or more. And people sitting in your chair have failed to execute and use the powers they have. All you have to do is tell China, if you want further immigration to America, you're going to have to take back these individuals because it costs us a lot of money either to keep them in detention, keep them taken care of, their medical needs, or we release them on bail and they uh, disappear into the country and, and nobody's able to find them or deport them. It's just a unacceptable thing. It's just a part of international immigration policy that if an individual from a, a country comes to the United States unlawfully, they should be able to be deported. With regard to um, the 287G program, it trains local law enforcement to determine whether an individual they come up against, maybe within the prison system, is what Alabama did, uh, to find out if they're here unlawfully to do it in a legal and constitutional way, to be cooperative with the federal government. It was a good program. It was, uh, was expanded and executed. But um, ICE touted it as a big success. Um, but they've removed this language from their website. Since January 2006, the 287G program is credited with identifying more than 304,000 potentially removable aliens, mostly at local jails. ICE has trained and certified more than 1,300 state local law officers to help enforce immigration law. Um, but in uh, last October, an ICE spokesman said this, that 287G program expand ICE's ability to initiate immigration enforcement actions uh, against uh, criminal aliens and those who fall within the ICE civil immigration enforcement priorities. As such, the program acts as a force multiplier for the agency and enhances public safety in participating jurisdictions by identifying potentially dangerous criminal aliens and ensuring they are removed from the United States and not released back into their communities. By the way, there was just a news report from Madison County, Huntsville area, uh, saw prosecutor Broussard, um, an illegal alien, had been convicted of murdering a police officer. He was on the ground, helpless, pleading for his life, and he murdered him. Uh, he, he committed suicide in prison. But um, I just would say we've got to be, if we really want to reduce those kind of incidents from happening, then we've got to use the tools that we have. So, but this administration, nevertheless, has systematically dismantled the 287G program, canceling agreements with law enforcement 
in slashing funding for the program largely because the amnesty advocates oppose it. They don't like it. And we have far too much action on behalf of this president and the Secretary of Homeland Security responding to advocates for illegal immigration than serving the lawful interests of the people of the United States. It just is. Um, so today only 35 programs are existing. That's less than half of what it was. It should have been ex expanded. So tell me, do you believe it's a good program? Should it be expanded, or do you want to continue to see it uh, wither on the vine? I believe the 280C, 287G program is a good program in many respects. The biggest problem we have, Senator, in terms of our ability to work with local law enforcement in removing criminal immigrants was the Secure Communities Program. 239 jurisdictions, I think, I got that number right, were refusing to work with us or were imposing limitations on the ability to work with us. That's a big problem. So we ended the Secure Communities Program and we replaced it with a new program that I believe resolves the political and legal controversy and it takes two to dance. So I'm now out there meeting with a lot of sheriffs, a lot of police chiefs, a lot of governors and a lot of mayors to introduce them to the new program so that they will work with us again on immigration enforcement. Well, I just talked to some sheriffs and they're very willing to help. They're very critical of Homeland Security and the federal government for not protecting their communities. And uh, even though some cities may refuse, others, no doubt, would be willing to participate, and sheriff departments would. So, Mr. Secretary, I, I, this, the whole tenor of this, if anybody understands what's happening, indicates that you're not demonstrating a will to see the law be enforced. And I if disagree. you will do that effectively, and if you'll send a clear message and utilize the tools that you have, instead of undermining the tools that you have, I believe we could have a dramatic improvement in the amount of number of people who attempt to enter unlawfully. We could reduce dramatically visa overstays uh, at very little cost. Um, and once the message gets out that you're not going to be able to come to the United States unlawfully, fewer and fewer people will attempt to come. So uh, That's I in fact to, what's happening, sir. Well, you are having a reduction, it appears, at the border. We don't know how much. This agent says uh, more than, for everyone apprehended, more than that gets by, particularly the drug smugglers. But uh, so be it. Uh, we're going to have another surge, according to your own agents, uh, this summer with, from Central America, it appears. So I would like to see. I don't think I'm being unfair about this. I've watched this for a long time, and I don't think I'm being unfair. This president has been focused on uh, re reducing the activities and lawful jurisdiction of your agents. Their morale is in the tank. They are not happy with what's going on, and the American people shouldn't either. And I think we should be stronger on secure communities. I believe, Mr. Secretary, you're right. That's a good program. And I, I don't understand. The, it's almost to me like they don't understand it or just refuse to participate in it. To take a fingerprint from somebody who's in the country unlawfully and send it to Homeland Security, maybe you would identify someone who has a particularly violent history or maybe you'll identify uh, where they are and in the future if they're arrested again at the border, you'd have information in that data. We do it for normal criminals. So I support you on that. I, I think you should not have backed down on it. I think it's a very reasonable thing. So I'll let you wrap up uh, uh, in any way you would like, and the record will remain open for one week for additional questions. Uh, thank you, Senator. And um, I do want to say something in conclusion. I have discovered that as the leader of an organization of 225,000 people, one of the ways to 
ensure that we continue low morale is to continue to say publicly to my workforce, you have low morale. And so the other week, there was a subcommittee on the House side that wanted to have another hearing on low morale within DHS. And they called one of my people as a witness, and they got a visit from me. And I said, please stop telling my workforce you have low morale. I don't believe that. I think that there are a lot of good people in DHS that are very dedicated to their mission at the airports, at the ports, at the border. I've seen it myself. They work overtime for public safety, for border security, for aviation security. I visited with a woman in New Orleans who was almost killed by a deranged man who was shot in the arm and came to work the next day. That's the level of her dedication in our department. We are on an aggressive campaign to improve the experience of people in my workforce. More transparency in hiring, promotions, uh, mentoring experiences. I'm thanking people for their work. We brought back our secretary's award ceremony. But those who keep telling my workforce that you have low morale are not helping, frankly. And I want to improve things within the department. I want to make it a better, more efficient, effective place. I know you share that view, Senator. And so I'm on an aggressive campaign to improve how our workforce thinks about their very, very important mission. And I'm hoping I get the support of Congress in that. Well, one of the things we're doing, I don't for think example, it's, uh... is, is pay reform for immigration enforcement personnel. That's something I need Congress's help on, because one of the things I hear from them is we're capped at GS9. We need a pay raise. I want to get them a pay raise. We've reformed pay for overtime for our Border Patrol agents, and we want to do more of that. So I'm looking for the support of Congress on that. Look, it was before your time. I raised the question with Secretary Napolitano over a series of years. I asked her, for example, had she even met with uh, Chris Crane, the head of the Immigration Customs Enforcement Officers Association, she'd never met with him. I asked her every time she came before the committee, and she refused to meet with him. And their problem has not been pay, although I'm sure they'd like to have more pay. Their fundamental problem has been they're not being supported uh, if they actually enforce the law and do what the law says. Uh, they're told by their supervisors uh, not to do so. You've got this officer under oath before a committee uh, recently in, in the Senate saying that uh, they're told not to report groups of 20 or more people. That's the kind of, I've been hearing for years before you came. So I suggest that uh, you need to be listening to their agents and get on their side and try to help them fulfill their legal obligation and your obligation. Instead, we're being led by a president who's uh, unlawfully giving amnesty to people who entered the country by the millions, entered it illegally. Um, well, that's where we are. So thank you um, um, for <clears throat> Senator, testimony. I've met with, uh, I'll let you reply again. I've met with uh, Chris Crane. But more importantly, I've met with hundreds of people that he represents who are on the border, who work for me. And I consider that to be a fundamental part of my job as the leader of this organization. Well, you know, I indicated to you when you came it was going to be a difficult job. I believe what I shared with you was you're not going to be allowed to do what you're supposed to do if you take this job. This president does not want to see the immigration laws enforced. That's what's happened. The officers know it. Everybody that studies it realizes that you're not moving aggressively to help them end the illegal immigration. And as a result, we've got this um, difficult problem out there. Um, you're a good man. Uh, you've got good abilities. Um, I, I do believe you care about your officers. And you are right, they, we have a lot of fine, talented people. There's just a level of frustration out there that I hope you'll spend some time listening to and see if you can't respond to. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take sir. care. We'll dismiss. <clears throat>